the name of our risen Lord, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church for October the 11th, and we are celebrating Thanksgiving today. We are live in London and also shared on YouTube. Hi, it's Vivian, and I'm excited once again to welcome you to worship. You can find the words for the hymns and responses on the screen. Come, let us worship God now with our hearts and souls and minds. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. This weekend usually brings families together to share in God's glorious bounty. As we gather and mark Thanksgiving this weekend in different ways in 2020, Guide us, Lord, in ways of thanksgiving that always point to your goodness, your bounty, your love. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the Tree of Life version of the Bible, and we are reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We urge you, brothers and sisters, correct the unruly, Comfort the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will 
for you in Messiah Yesawa. Do not quench the thirst. Do not despise prophetic messages, but test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Keep away from every kind of evil. Now, may the God of Shalom himself make you completely holy and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept complete, blameless at the coming of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Faithful is the one who calls you, and he will make it happen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is Thanksgiving a thing just for today or, or tomorrow? In our hymn that's coming up, we will sing, For the fruit of all creation, thanks be to God. And there are many other things for us to be grateful for in that hymn. And we always respond, thanks be to God. So, is Thanksgiving a choice or an attitude? I think it's an approach to living that the faithful are encouraged to, well, well to live up to. So what does our First Thessalonians text say today about living in a mode of thanksgiving? These three things. Rejoice always. The word rejoice appears about 14 times in the New Testament. So go ahead then, folks, rejoice. And you might respond, but I have such woes, I can't rejoice. In our text, Paul commands the church of Thessalonica to rejoice. But remember their situation. The church there was in the middle of a severe wave of persecution. So were Paul's words helpful at that time? Paul is speaking about joy, which is not a spontaneous emotion, but rather an intentional act of faith. Paul is encouraging a rejoicing as a decision that we make. Rejoice always, he writes. Rejoice always. Second thing, pray constantly. Paul then advises the Christians in Thessalonica to pray always. Do you? Do you ever forget to pray or, or worse, get too upset or angry to pray? Maybe prayer is like dieting, where you say, oops, I ate too much today, or I overdid the fat content of my food. I love those empty calories of chips and, and nuts. The advice I have heard is, forget about your dietary errors for today. For tomorrow, the counter goes back to zero. And I would say the same is true with prayer. I forget or I get too upset to pray. So tomorrow, I reset my prayer counter. But if I go too long without prayer, then there's days where I take very intentional time to pray, to focus on just that. With our diets, what you need is essential. And the same is true for our prayer life. Pray without ceasing, Paul tells us. Some would call prayer heavenly fuel. Remember last week's acrostic sermon based on Psalm 111? The verse in Psalm 111 read, To be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. And my acrostic letter that I had got to was P. Persistence is how you make yourself known to us, I wrote. Persistence is how we desire to honor you. Persistence is how we desire to love you. Persistence is how you love us. Persistence is how you build us up. Persistence is how you come to us. And now today we could add, persistence is how we pray. Pray constantly. Hallelujah. His praise endures forever. We must pray persistently. Because in the spiritual realm, God answers our prayers the moment we start praying. Even though we might not or will not see the results in our realm right away. Persistence is how we pray. 
Pray constantly. And the third thing, give thanks. In our next hymn, I've included the photos and messages you've emailed me for Thanksgiving. And I've included the decorations that the Trinity women have arranged here at the church. So thank you, ladies, for putting those decorations together. Thanksgiving, again, is more of an attitude. It's a response, too, yes. But I would rather say it's an attitude as the way to look at your world. Give thanks for the things you have, for the love you've experienced. Well, for everything. And you know, it is a very biblical attitude as well. Just a few thoughts on this thanksgiving in the face of the unknown. When else do we need to rely on God the most? Except when faced with the unknown. Remember Mary's song? My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Another thought is thanksgiving when you don't feel like it. The Bible shows us examples of thanksgiving as a response to God, even when God is silent even when we don't feel like it. The sacrifice of thanksgiving, and it is a sacrifice, that time when you muster up the habits of praise, if, even if your heart isn't in it. And that pushing and dragging yourself into that, well, it drags you step by step back into the presence of the Lord. As David writes in Psalm 13, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? Look on me, answer me, my Lord, give light to my eyes. And another biblical thought that we can add in is thanksgiving for others. Think about the start of each of Paul's letters. He expresses his thanks for the people that he ministers with and encourages. From Romans First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. We're from 1 Corinthians. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have been enriched in him. We're in Ephesians. Paul writes, I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. Oh, dearly, I would love to hear that prayer said for me. There are countless examples of thanksgiving in Scripture. For the good we all inherit, for the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, most of all, that love has found us. And we say, thanks be to God. So let us sing that song and let that song be our amen.
pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through your people. And we pray for your continued blessings in our ministry together. Bountiful God, bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy, especially for those within our congregation ill or recovering. Lou Mantle, Marg and Don Cook, Gunter Steer, Monica Spilsbury, and Marianne Stewart. And also for those close to our congregation, Richard Jackman, husband of Nancy, Steve Hodgins, son-in-law of Linda Reynolds, Jack Kells, son of Madeline, Pastor Julio Romero, friend of Pastor Steve's, Deborah Kenny and Bobby Mantle, daughter and son of Lou and Sharon Mantle, Al Barrett, husband of Carol, Frida Paler, friend of the congregation. We also pray for those that we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversation with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. We also pray for those in the Thames ministry area, especially Pastor Mike Leeds and the people of Trinity, Windsor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord, so oftentimes, as any other day, we sit down to our meal and pray. We hurry along and make fast the blessing. Thanks. Amen. Now please pass the dressing. We're slaves to the olfactory overload. We must rush our prayers before the food gets cold. But Lord, I'd like to take a few minutes more to really give thanks to what I'm thankful for. For my family, my health, a nice soft bed, my friends, my freedom, a roof over my head. I'm thankful right now to be surrounded by those whose lives touch me more than they'll ever possibly know. Thankful, Lord, that you've blessed me beyond measure. Thankful that in my heart lives life's greatest treasure, that you, dear Jesus, reside in that place. And I'm ever so grateful for your unending grace. So please, Heavenly Father, bless our social bubbles. Keep us safe and healthy, avoiding all COVID troubles. Be present, Lord, at every table. Make us joyful as each is able. Amen. Together with the church around the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, God the Father God Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our offerings arrive at the church via the mail, my people dropping things off, or over the internet, we give you thanks to God for the offerings that our community brings. Let us pray. Providing God, we return these gifts to you, our time, our talents, our treasures. Use them and use us for the sustaining of your ministry through our Trinity congregation to share the good news and to glorify your holy name. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give, we give you thanks, thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray with the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine. Make his face to shine. Shine upon you. Shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. And lift up his countenance.